You've got an empty flat, you've got time on your hands, and Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen just does nothing for you. So what do you do? You ask a man who can. I give you Tony Allen and his Star Trek apartment. Welcome to the 24th century. Well, this is my apartment in Hinckley, although you could call it a spaceship. It's loosely based on, on various aspects of Star Trek and what was happening in the background. Um, the background as designed by Michael Akuda from the next generation onwards. Uh, I'm two and a half years in designing this apartment. I mean, we watch Star Trek and we're taken in by Star Trek and it's a, a kind of escapism. But I mean, bearing in mind that it is a television program and, and the props are all made by somebody. And I think the challenge to make something uh, a facsimile of of what he's seen every week on television was too great for me. I had to do it. Um, and I had to make it full size as well. And it got, it got more complicated as I went along. Well, it all started when I, uh, when I made this console. It, uh, it was a bit of a challenge. The transporter room is, is the focal point of, of the Starship Enterprise. And I thought, well, that's the thing I'll try and make. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. A lot of people must like that kind of style because a lot of people watch it. And I know they watch it for the, some form of escapism, but um, I, I believe that what goes on in the background is also very important as well. And I remember seeing Infinity Mirror in a Star Trek movie. I remember Leonard Nimoy being sat in an area and behind him was some Infinity Mirror. And I thought, well, I'll take it to the next level and actually make a big one. <laughs> Uh, so I've made this one above my head, which is a metre square. In actual fact, it consists of two mirrors, and um, it gives you the, the feeling that you're looking out into space. So I put lighting in the floor here, which is reflected in the infinity mirror, and when you actually stand on this light on the glass floor with the lighting underneath, you feel as if you're suspended in kind of space sort of thing. With lighting like this, Again, it's, it's, it's micro lights, a bit of plexiglass, a bit of imagination, and uh, it doesn't really do anything, it just gives some uh, nice mood lighting. You can see people sat in the front room and they've got this big white light in the middle of the room and they're all sat there watching television sort of thing. Uh, and, and to me, the room's lost its feeling or mood or whatever decoration they've done in the room, it's lost it with this big white light. I saw this Borg that was put into the brig, and their brig was mainly made up of uh, white lights, I dare say, because of television, it had to look quite foreboding. Um, but I couldn't do with the white lights, so I made a similar um, brig, but only with the blue lighting and more friendly, um, with a force field. Uh, and it's supposed to give you the, the, the feeling that if you were to cross that brig uh, with the force field engaged, then you would be annihilated. Uh, if you're a bad person. <laughs> I haven't been annihilated because I know how the controls work. I find, and this is no disrespect to any of the DIY programs, um, that they, they tend to pull, and very well, they pull on established ideas, established themes, Moroccan or Italian or Egyptian, and they're very good at it. I'm not going to say that I think there's a market. I think there, there are people who would like to live in this environment. There'd be a lot of people would like to live in a place like this. 